Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be calculating the rate of inflation by doing a numerical example on the consumer price index. Now, before you move forward on this video, I would advise you that if you haven't watched my previous video that was on consumer price index, so you stop this video and watch that video first, and then you can come back on this video. And I've posted the link of that video in my description below. Now guys, what I've done over here is that we have a basket of goods here and I've included a few items in it, such as clothing and footwear, household goods and services, food and travel. And we've also given the weights over here, which is represented by the proportion of the weekly household expenditure that is spent on each category and that is what is so the so the amount that is spent um you know it can be weekly or monthly or whatever but the amount the proportion of the expenditure uh, the proportion of the household expenditure that is spent on each category or each item is basically represented by the weights it represents the relative importance the importance or the rank how how are they ranked um you know in the consumer's basket so the item which has the highest expenditure that is done by households on it is given the highest weight right um, so basically this basket is telling us that the weights are telling us that 25 percent of the consumer's expenditure of a typical household's um, expenditure is is gone is, is is basically done on clothing and footwear while 15 percent is spent on uh, you know uh, household goods and services while 40 percent is spent on food and 20 percent is spent on traveling right so this is what this basket is telling us now we have the average prices um, of the basket of goods and services such as 40 dollars 65 and 20. now if you have seen my previous video once we have formulated the basket of goods and assigned weights to it so what we do is that we add up we 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 don't add up the average prices of those goods in fact we add up the weighted average price because we basically multiply the weights by the average prices so what you need to do is that once you have the basket of goods in front of you and you have the weights in front of you as well so and you have the prices in front of you as well so these three things you need to so first thing you need to have a basket of goods which is and that should include the items that a typical household or family spends then the weights and then the prices so what you need to do is that you multiply the weights by the average prices so 25 percent is spent on uh let's say you know housing and uh, sorry clothing and footwear so you multiply 25 percent would be 0 0.25 or 1 over 4 right so 0 0.25 times 40 would give you 10 similarly 15 percent of 60 would give you 9 0.4 of 0.4 into 5 would give you 2 dollars and 0.2 into 20 would give you four dollars then you add up all these weighted average prices and you get a total weighted average price of the basket so this is representing that the weighted average price of the basket in let's say 2010 because this is 2010 and also guys i've assumed that 2010 is my base year right so 2010 is my base year and the weighted average price of the basket in the base year is 25 dollars now i have formulated another basket in 2011 that is the next year the same expended the 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 the, the same goods and services are formulated in that basket but uh, you know slightly the prices have been varied and then you know the proportion of weekly household expenditure is varied too i told you in my previous video as well that every year this bar basket is you know um, adjusted in terms of what has to be included in the basket and what does not have to be included in the basket and the weights are reviewed as well because the household's proportion of expenditure on certain goods within that basket would basically keep on changing right so um, so basically the average prices have, uh, you know, for the commodity, for the, for, for, for these items have basically gone up, you know, the clothing and footwear was $40. Now it is $44 in 2011 household, uh, goods and services from $60, it went up to 90 food went up from $5 to $8 and traveling went up from 20 traveling is the same. It's, it's still the price of traveling is the same. However, the percentage, um, weekly household expenditure has changed. It's, it's not necessary that this could be weekly household expenditure. It could be monthly household expenditure as well. Basically it's representing how much a typical household or an average family spends weekly, right? But that depends upon, on what basis are the office of office of national statistics or the pakistan bureau of statistics um, office of national statistics in the uk and the pakistan bureau of statistics in pakistan are calculating what basis are they taking are they taking weekly expenditures or monthly expenditures proportion of weekly expenditures or monthly expenditures that is what i mean so 0 0.25 into 44 would give you 11 dollars 0 0.10 0 0.1 i mean 0 0.10 into 90 would give you 9 dollars then 50% of it would be $4 and 15% of 20 would be $3. Now you add up the weighted average prices of all the items in that basket, you get a weighted average price of the basket of $27. So you guys remember that we have to calculate the weighted average price of the basket of goods. Now the weighted average price of the basket of goods in 2010 was $25, which we calculated over here, it was $25. And in 2011, the weighted average price of the basket was $27. But you guys remember that we are calculating, so these are the consumer prices, 
but we need to convert the consumer prices into a consumer price index we need to convert these prices into an index form and the formula to convert it into an index form is we discussed in the previous video as well that you take the raw number raw number as in the weighted average price because the raw number over here is weighted average price divide by the base year raw number the, as in the raw number that is the weighted average price times 100 multiply by 100 here is referring to the conversion of the index number not the percentage and since according to this formula the raw number would be the weighted average price in 2011 divided by the divided by the base year raw number that is a weighted average price in the base year times 100 so guys the cpi for or the index for the base year always is 100 right and uh, in 2011 the weighted average price is 27 dollars so if you want to calculate the index for 2011 so the weighted average price in 2011 that is the raw number is $27 divided by the base year raw number which is the weighted average price in the base year it's basically $25 divided by $25 times 100 would give you this should be 27 divided by 25 multiplied by 100 so it should be 108 so the CPI in 2011 was 108 now the CPI in 2010 is 100 while the CPI in 2011 is 108 we easily know that the CPI is going up so if the CPI is going up the index is going up it means there is inflation so the price level is going up by 8% if you want to calculate the inflation rate it's simple new index minus old index divided by old index times 100 times 100 as in here we calculate the percentage so 108 minus 100 divided by 100 times 100 would give you an inflation rate of 8%, right? So this is basically telling us that the inflation has, uh, that in 2011, the country witnessed an inflation of 8%. That's how you basically calculate an inflation. And remember guys, I'm, I am I have told you before as well about uh, this, about weights. Um, in my previous CPI video, I'm gonna be telling you again that the proportion of the weekly expenditure or the monthly expenditure, basically the proportion of the household expenditure on the items in the basket of goods, these are the weights. And they tell us how big the importance of the weights is that it's very important to calculate the weighted average price and to include weights or take weights because the weights are telling us how big an impact um, a change in price of you know any particular type of goods and services will have on the cost of living of our households basically so for example let's say that you know there's a 10% increase in the average price of clothing and footwear we know that the average price of clothing and footwear went up from $40 to $44 but this 10% increase in the uh, prices of clothing and footwear uh, from 40 to 44 will matter more remember that this is going to matter more than a 10 percent increase in the prices of household goods and services from 60 to 66 dollars so although prices of household goods and services went up from 60 to 90 dollars but if there was a 10 percent increase in the price of uh, household goods and services from let's say 60 to 66 dollars there was a 10 percent increase let's say so this would have mattered less as compared to the clothing and footwear which would have gone up from let's say 40 to 44 dollars by a 10 percent increase because the simple reason is because you know it would have mattered more to to the consumer to to the households because 25 percent is spent on clothing and footwear rather than 15 percent being spent on household goods and services right because households spend proportionately more on of their expenditure on shoe as in you know clothing and footwear and shoes so that is why and because they spend more on clothing and footwear we definitely want that to feature in the you know inflation rate so that is why weights carry a very important weights carry importance um, in in sort of giving us a clear picture of how you know what importance would that carry if we are calculating the inflation rates and if the prices of those goods in the basket are fluctuating so the fluctuations in the prices are sort of truly representing the relative importance to the to the household as well because we're taking the weights into account as well right giving us a clear picture uh, to as in an item that is increasing in price is is uh, matters more to the consumer uh, rather than another item which is also increasing in price but the previous item matters more because the consumer how the household is spending more on that particular good rather than the next the other item okay guys so this is how we calculate inflation i hope you understood this video i'll see you all around in the next video until then take care